Nick in Lindhurst, New Jersey. Hey, Nick, thanks for listening to WWRL. What's up? Hey, Tom. I just wanted to, uh, I've been on for a while, re- gather my wits here. Mm. The uh, Tisco Cliff situation, I'm extremely disappointed, uh, disgusted is more like it, with, uh, with Obama's performance. I think that what's, what happened uh, is that he had the Republicans uh, basically by the cojones and uh, not only failed to squeeze hard enough, but really didn't squeeze at all. I think what, what we've got here is a situation where for four years the president has consistently gotten the short end of, these, of the stick in these kinds of confrontations. And we had hopes that, you know, once we reelected him, maybe he would find his, his courage. I'm, I don't think he's stupid or incompetent. He clearly understands all the ins and outs and all the negotiating tactics uh, and the extent to which he's dealing with recalcitrant, I would call them political economic terrorists at this point. I mean, you, when, when will we ever get a better uh, negotiating point than the Republican Party holding hostage 98% of the American people to give a tax break to 2%, and then we bump it up to 1% by making it up to 450 as if right. the middle class was between 250 and 450 per year. Right. It's insane what, ha- what happened yesterday, and for, for three hours now I've been listening to you talk about it in a very rational, cool, calm, and collected way, uh, which you want to do, but w- if people well, it's understood... too late to do anything talking. about it, but you, you're, you're absolutely right in, in all the details of what you said, and, and, and in fact I can make it even worse. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the, the goodies that were given away are just, you know, incredible. Uh, I've got a list of them around here someplace. Here we go. The GOP Clown Act. Uh, here, eight huge corporate handouts in the fiscal cliff bill over at Alternet, uh, helping out NASCAR, hundred million or so for the railroads. Disney's got to eat. Help a brother mining company out. Subsidies for Goldman Sachs. You know, Goldman Sachs is going to get one point six billion dollars in free tax refinancing for their new massive headquarters in New York City uh, as part of this legislation. I mean, you know, it's, but you're uh, you're absolutely right. The president. This was his point of maximum power over the Republicans. And thank you, Nick, for calling and making the point. This was his absolute point of maximum power, and he used about half of that, in my opinion. Now, the other side of that argument, and the, uh, and the uh, argument that I am quite certain the White House would make, is that had he gone the whole way, had he said, okay, you know, we are going to bring you guys to your knees, that people like me would be cheering him on, people like you, Nick, would be cheering him on, but... You know, the millions of people whose unemployment insurance would stop would not be cheering him on. The GIs, uh, veterans benefits that would stop would not be cheering him on. That, that in the process of holding this nation hostage, the economic terrorists, the Republicans, would actually cause enough pain that eventually the president would have to blink. Or actually, frankly, I don't even think that that's what would happen. They would eventually cause enough pain that the middle-of-the-road Democrats in the Senate would have blinked. And that's, that is the situation that we're at. The, the, the president largely has to deal with the hand that he's got. And yes, it was a point of maximum advantage, and yes, he still has people like Max Baucus in the Senate, and he's still got some folks in the House who, you know, sometimes they'll go with the Republicans, sometimes they'll go with the Democrats. And, you know, it would have been nice to see the, the Republican Party self-destruct, and it looks kind of like maybe that's what's happening. I haven't quite totally, I, I was going to say I haven't t- quite figured this out. I mean, I understand all the dimensions of what's going on here, and, and I can lay out for you all the details of it. And, in fact, I've been doing so slowly over, those, uh, over the last three hours. All that said... The people on the far right, and I'm going to be debating this tonight with a couple of conservatives on our, on our TV show on The Big Picture. Uh, the people on the far right, are they're feeling like they got screwed. right? There, was no, there were no spending cuts. And the people on the far left, what we used to call the center of America, people who think we should have strong Social Security and you know, rich people should pay you know, reasonable taxes and maybe having more billionaires isn't a good idea, and, and uh, people in favor of card check and unionization and whatnot. Those of us on the left feel like, oh, you know, we, we didn't get the best deal. But right down the middle, the, the, for the average American, I think that there's a very high probability. And, and here's the reason why I'm saying this, I can't say it with certainty, is because we'll never know. I mean, you know, what happened is what happened, and everything else is theoretical. But I think there's a very high probability that this is going to 
work out well for the president and for the country, even though the price that was paid was things like, you know, giving Goldman Sachs goodies and making sure that Mitt Romney's taxes never go below, never go above 20 percent. 